Hello, family. Trust y'all are well today. This rainy, drizzly day. I want to share one uh, thought with you from Matthew. I've been reflecting upon uh, Matthew 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount, since the beginning of the year, uh, reading through it, not every day, uh, that was my desire, but uh, trying to read through it regularly. Um, and there's any number of verses on any given day will kind of stop me in my tracks and make me wrestle and ponder and think. And But one that often does is chapter 7, verse 12, where Jesus says that, he says, So do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And then he adds, for this is the law and the prophets. In one sentence, Jesus summarizes the Old Testament. This is the law and the prophets. Treat other people the way you'd want to be treated. Just that principle gives us a lot to ponder and think about. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. How do I want to, how would I want to be treated in any given situation? If I'm interacting with another person, it is an act of Christian discipleship to put myself in their place and ask the question, if I were them, how would I want to be treated? And then to treat them accordingly. That is the law and the prophets. That's what the whole Old Testament is about. That principle treating other people the way that I would want them to treat me. There's one other time in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus uses the phrase law and the prophets. It's earlier in chapter 5, verse 17, where he says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I haven't come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus says, I came to fulfill the law and the prophets. And then two chapters later, he tells us, the law and the prophets is, do unto others as you would have them do to you. A, B equals B, B equals C, A equals C. So if the Old Testament is, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, and if Jesus came to uh, fulfill the Old Testament, then Jesus is the fulfillment of do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Jesus is the fulfillment of that principle. Not only is he the demonstration of it, but he fulfills it. And in fulfilling it, he enables us to do that for other people. It's hard to love other people, treat other people the way that you would want to be treated. That's hard. I have a wife. I have children. I have co-workers, fellow elders in the ministry of the church. I have congregants in my congregation, some of you. I have neighbors. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to treat other people the way I would want them to treat me. That's not my default mode. But in Jesus, it is becoming our default mode. We grow into that more and more. The more we reflect upon how Jesus has treated us, the more we allow that to soften us and make us empathetic to the needs of other people, the more we allow who Jesus is and what he's done to impact our own hearts, the better able we are to then love other people genuinely from the heart, which is a third time in Matthew that Jesus uses the language of law and prophets together. The law and the prophets hang on two commands. Love the Lord your God with their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And your neighbor is yourself. That's the fulfillment of the Old Testament. That is Jesus. He loved the Lord with everything that he was. And he loved his neighbor, laying down his life for his neighbors. Uh, out of love. How does my wife want to be treated? Well put myself in her situation, if I were in her situation, how would I want to be treated? 
How do my kids want to be treated? Well, if I were in their situation, how would I want to be treated? With my fellow elders. I've had a lot of opportunity over the last several months, the last year, to have conversation, discussion, disagreement with my fellow elders. Men that I love and men that I know love me, and yet in those moments, my temptation is not to love them as I think I would want to be loved, but to make my point and to be right and make sure that I'm understood and heard and not considering how my words or my demeanor might affect them. It may be that some of you have experienced that same thing coming out of me. Instead of me being empathetic and putting myself in your shoes, asking the question, how would I want to be loved if I were in his situation, if I were in her situation? You've experienced something other from me, and I'm sorry for that. That's not the way of Jesus. The way of Jesus is putting himself in our place, loving us fully, saving us to the uttermost. With that truth, knowing what Jesus has done for me, I am then humbled and better equipped to love others as I would want to be loved, because that's what Jesus has done for me. This is the law and the prophets, that you do to others as you would have them do to you. It's good advice. It comes from Jesus. We do well to heed that advice, to trust him that his word is true and his way is the good way. May God give us grace to obey and to love one another as our Savior has loved us. Grace and peace, my friends.